This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. It's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the social medias in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And oh, I didn't even test it. Do I have the? Yeah, look at that. There's a tree over there. Ha! That's my Christmas shot. How about that? And Dave Ponder is, of course, right behind me of the iPhoneography podcast. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good tonight. Doing good. And we're still not under the paywall. At least this part until later when no. we are. Um, I got. I want to tease that for Patreon. I know it's late posting the Patreon this week, but that's another reason to sign up and get the live feed so you don't have to wait for that. Uh, uh, I got a new Loop TV, and I'm going to do an unboxing. So, And I'll explain Ooh. what the heck a Loop TV is when we get to that. I know I've talked about it ages ago on the show when we got the first one, and we got a uh, little reboot of it. So we'll get to that in a moment. But anyways, um, let's get into the... Oh, that's weird. That's weird. I think we got a loose connection in there somewhere. Oh, I moved the iPad, so I think that got weird. Uh, anyways, Dave Potter, what is your awesome thing of the week? Well, now, this is something awesome specifically to Pittsburgh. So, now, if you're coming to visit anyone in Pittsburgh, this is an awesome thing to do. Uh, the University of Pittsburgh in the Cathedral of Learning on the first and third floors have rooms decorated for different nationalities. Mm -hmm. And around this time of year, they're decorated for Christmas. So there's 31 rooms which are decorated for uh, different nationalities. And some of them are made to look like um, classrooms from that area. And some places are made just to have a general feel for what, it was, what it's like in that uh, country from a particular time. And there, they do have guided tours. It's only $10. The guide is very knowledgeable. Uh, however, I would say make sure that you have comfortable shoes and you have no problem with a good amount of walking. Uh, because, it, because of the building being built between, I think they said 1926 and 1937, uh, it is not handicap accessible. Mm. So we went with Ruth's dad, who is a bit of a slow walker. So it can you can, if you're with someone who is a bit of a slow walker, it can be a bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, the guide's good with trying to make sure everyone's kind of kept together. Uh, just something to keep in mind. But it's absolutely the rooms are absolutely gorgeous when you look at them. And I made a little slideshow. Um, What'd you make the slideshow in? It's very fancy. Uh, I made it, I made the slideshow in Apple Clips. Okay. Nice. Uh, mainly because CapCut and TikTok do a horrible job with horizontal photos. Mm. I, and, I maybe he's not great with it either. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't use iMovie. I could have done that, but I was having trouble loading it up. Mm -hmm. uh, so Apple Clips does a pretty good job. And the commons area is amazing. You know, you, 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 it literally, you think you're in a Harry Potter movie. Mm -hmm. like, you know, it's four story high, slate floors. You have the, you know, the, the grand arches. And as the, as the tour guy told us, they're uh, functional arches. So you can see this is the Austrian room. Mm -hmm. And the and this is a newer one. But and then there's a Filipino room that we went to. Um kind of decorated, uh, looking into the Swiss room. Uh, there was an Indian room. Mm -hmm. You can see, and they have classes in these rooms. Mm -hmm. That's the great, that's the, that's the kind of the wild thing for most of these, most of these rooms, they also have day-to-day -day classes. You could have an English course yeah. in that room. Uh, the early American room here, they don't just because it's not the most, it, there's some very, there's valuable stuff in there. Um, and you can see, like, outside the doors are all ornate, and they have de different decorations depending mm -hmm. on what room you're in. 
Uh, so you have like the Chinese room, um, the, the Irish room. Very cool. Do you, um, do you get that? How far? Would, how far up in the cathedral do you get to go? Uh, well, it's the first and for, third floor only. Okay. Uh, so that's where, it, and really, it's easy to go. I think you can go first to thirtieth floor just to kind of if you just want to wander around. Mm-hmm. Um, but certain floors are more of an off limit. It's 42 stories tall. Oh yeah. So it, it, it is number. a, <laughs> it, it is a major skyscraper, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is very unusual for a university to have that tall of a building. Mm-hmm. Um, the story the guy told us was the chancellor at Pitt at the time, uh, got into a cab and said, take me to the university of Pittsburgh. And the cab driver had no idea where that was. So he wanted to make a statement building where you would definitely see it Mm -hmm. and people would know where it is. And it, it, like I said, it's absolute, it's an absolute gorgeous building. Um, They, what renovations they did do to like add ramps to make it accessible. They made it look like it was part of the original building. Nice. So they do a great job. I love there's one thing I love about this town. Love and and sometimes hate functionally about this town is all these old buildings like this. Like uh, we we've done a, a, a kind of similar like it, it, I've been there for a couple like a, a boxing event and a, re- a couple wrestling events. Um, the Priory on the north side, um, uh, old church. It's beautiful mm-hmm. inside, right? It's one of my favorite venues that I've seen like anything in. Uh, but I had to do a boxing event there and was helping out, and I realized like you know we you know the steps like there's certain equipment or there was certain some size equipment like we were using a big case at the time and thankfully it wasn't my gig or we would have had a problem at the at the time mm-hmm. but i was just like oh some of my equipment would not make it up these stairs because it's like this thin staircase that's mm-hmm. kind of weird and angular to get up to the the balcony area where we needed to set up and it was just incredibly i'm just so glad these guys had just like like small road cases or something like that right so um, mm-hmm. like that kind of thing. So you had to get up to the balcony and, and it was, uh, it was really interesting. So that's very, very cool. I don't think I've ever been in the cathedral. Um, a lot of people don't, unless it. you go yeah. there, unless you're now, if you're a pit student, obviously you yeah, go yeah, there yeah, because yeah. people love to go there to study. It's, mm-hmm. it's very, I don't know if it's a matter of the building is quiet or people just tend to be extra quiet when mm-hmm. they're in the building. Mm-hmm. Oh, it just feels like everything would travel in that place. So yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, well, I got a little bit of a visual one for you too. This is actually something from Instagram. I saw that I, I, I love this. And, and I know when we, you know, Katie's really good about bringing up um, accessibility on the show uh, when it comes to kind of web things and stuff like this. But this is also like, I, I remember there was always, you know, the, there was a, there was a, a somebody with, that was, that had some vision problems that used to come to wrestling shows, for instance. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how do they, you know, how do they kind of roll with that? Right. I don't think they were completely or anything like that. Cause he'd yell, he'd yell at me for being in the way on camera. So I was like, okay. Uh, but you know, he had a dog and stuff, but, uh, but anyways, but, but it is kind of like a thing. Like, how do you like kind of, uh, uh, um, you know, enjoy a, a live experience? I love this thing. Um, and actually goes with something else I want to bring up from last night too. Um, but this is from the Ocaglia Calcio football club, (laughs) soccer club. Um, and they had this pretty cool thing where it's, um, basically if you're in the stands, obviously you're already hearing all of the, you know, you're hearing the audio of the announcer and you're hearing, hearing, you know, the fans and excitement. And this is, it looks like a little, like, you know, one of those little kind of soccer games, you know, that you would probably play with. But it, it, the idea is you put your fingers on the soccer field and there's like a force feedback here where the players are um, on the field and what's happening. So they can like, they can actually feel where, where they're at on the field and, and give you that kind of feedback to that. So you actually, you know, quote unquote, see what happens with your, with your touch. Um, and then hear everybody around you react to it, uh, bringing you further into that, that, uh, that, that experience there. Um, so I thought that was really cool. I, I don't know what this is called, where it comes from here because everything's in another language here, as you can see, uh, if you're with us on the video. Um, but again, you know, say that it's following the ball's movement on the field, uh, and, and Mary's wait, Mary's what's happening there. So I'm really interested to see. I want to know more about this technology. I want to take, hopefully take a moment and take a deep dive on this, but it's a very cool kind of concept. Yeah, that is now. Okay. So it looks like there's a little, and I'm looking, trying to look at some of the up close. There's a little 
thing that looks like a pebble that actually moves on the board. Mm -hmm. So they know where the ball is as it's moving around. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and that, that would be that would be so neat. That is such a great idea. And I don't know if it's I mean it looks kind of bulky. Because they're wearing straps around their neck to make sure it's on them. Right. Uh, but I don't know if there's a way to make that smaller. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's it's the first test. Or if they want to keep it that big just to make it easy for people to do. But no, that anytime you can expand mm -hmm. over what, you know, um, to, to people with different different abilities, that's great. Which also, also I know... Go ahead. Oh, I would say also, I know from hearing people who are vision impaired, uh, even if you're legally blind, you can still sometimes see things. Yeah, enough. And just it's just not enough to like, you know, like fully detail. You can at least like, like right. make some things out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so it kind of related to that. And, and, and I did tune in. I remembered last night when I got, I got back from a meeting. Um, and, and realize, oh, wait, hey, that thing that we talked about is on. And I got the catch like the last minute of the game uh, of the Simpsons Monday Night Football. Whoop, that's you. There we go. And uh, yep. this is this is uh, there's a little Don't. clip they put on ESPN. So I hope NFL doesn't get me on this. Um, but it, uh, Homer Simpsons uh, throws the first touchdown. <laughs> so uh, and apparently like well, they were on like fourth and whatever at the end of the game. And apparently <laughs> they turned all the players into Homer and Homer and uh, and, and Bart. Um you know, it, it kind of it kind of reacted the way that I expected it to. Again, there, this, this is this is a digital output that's mimicking what's happening on the field in the actual game, with no feedback of seeing what's actually happening in the actual game. Right. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get to pull up like Monday Night Football next to this and see if everything kind of matched. And there were things where people would dance and move and like they kind of cut it like they would cut into each other. Look, there's a giant donut on the touchdown. <laughs> uh, they, they would like cut into each other and like somebody's head was in somebody's like abdomen or something like that. And eventually they would cut away because they realized it was getting weird. Um, yeah. So, you know, and then there you see the, the flying saucer come in because like I'm watching it and, and, and Missy's like, what the hell is that ship doing? It was like it's dropping the ball for them to snap. <laughs> So, like at the beginning of the thing, it drops the ball down for mm -hmm. the, the, the continue or whatever. Um, it was really interesting. Um, it, I don't know if I would have been able to take that for the like you know three hours of a game or whatever, right? Um, so because it was like you know they'd have like the professor, yeah. you know, like like little bits come in that were obviously pre-planned and didn't have anything actually to do with the game. Like they had the professor coming in the corner and says, "Yeah, there's a 99 percent uh, uh, chance everybody will be stuck in traffic." And then <laughs> they do a cutaway of a Simpsons eyes, uh, uh, Mr. Burns and jerry jones saying oh there they are in their box uh planning to take over the world you know like, things like that like little gags like that around it so um if you're a big simpsons fan or uh, yeah you you probably would enjoy this you big simpsons plus football fan you're probably gonna enjoy the heck out of this thing um but i, I again i, I and i want to see again they're going to be doing an nba one that's going to be just with straight disney characters on christmas day so I need to remember mm. that and tune in for that. And of course, I believe the game is replayable on Disney Plus. Um, that, that's what I brought it up on since mm. everything's on Disney Plus now. <sighs> so um, yeah, because that kind of makes sense yeah. since when Fox Studios got mm -hmm. split off from Fox mm -hmm. News, that got bought out by Disney. Yep, it's so all over. The Simpsons. So Lisa Simpson oh, yeah. is a Disney princess. Yes, and they've been having all these terrible crossovers. <laughs> videos they've been doing on there um and they're they're not good they're not they're just like okay we get it we get it simpsons you know um but yeah if you want to kind of check that out there's now an espn tab i am curious if you guys are getting if you do not subscribe to hulu and espn plus or in a bundle or anything like that are you still getting like the like is it populating with everything that you can't access at that point um so i want to put that out there i i re happened to recently around the time they were doing this get um rolled into a bundle with my fios um that includes them um but you know i kind of avoid them because of commercials but uh but yeah it's getting a little it's getting a little crowded it seems these days <laughs> over here so I, I i didn't know if you guys are experiencing that too can you watch back football games oh you can there's a, there is a replay of the it's uh the simpsons fun day football if you're looking for it on the app okay and i think that is available to you whether i think that was available to you if you had espn plus and or disney plus if i'm not okay. mistaken so it was I, either, i'm it was pretty either. sure it was available to both of you again let me know if you're one way or the other and, and kind of seeing that like i can 
I keep getting this keeps yes i do want to watch this but not right now i guess i do want to watch the muppet christmas family christmas from 1987 yes oh. watch, out, watch out for the ice patch guys um yeah. if you know you know um sorry mm-hmm. i've been reliving my childhood and watching a lot of muppet movies lately so um anyways <laughs> so that's my awesome thing I, again yeah. I, I, i'm not a regular foot uh sports ball watcher but um you know, I, I love these scene. The technology around sports always fascinates me. I like, like, you know, what is that thing that sense? And, and especially considering we're actually talking about tracking um, mechanisms for some of the stuff we intend to do in the near future for video for some of these projects that we're working on. Um, so I'm very interested to see, obviously, at the higher level, what are they doing? What does this look like? Um, I will wa- I would definitely watch NASCAR for like 10 minutes if I'm flipping through channels um, because I, they have those little pointers that point at the cars and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, how do they do that, right? Um, and I want to I, I want to know. And I know it's all positioning and they have cameras and sensors and all that kind of stuff. Kind of like the same thing that detects your face when you, you when you open your iPhone, right? Without actually taking a true picture of you, right? So um, you know, no, that that's that's very very cool. So go check that out and uh, some really cool things. And I'm hoping I can find a deeper link for that. Um, for that soccer thing too, because I'd love to know, know a little bit more about that tech. Again, the, like, okay, we're just got a tracker in the ball. How's that work? How's that sense that? Mm-hmm. How accurate is it? You know, to to and they're sending that signal to multiple of these. They had like three three people like like sitting beside each other with this thing. Um, so no, I, that's that's very cool. Very cool um, um, stuff there. So that yeah, because yeah. to put a sensor on the ball, mm-hmm. um. You would have to, it would change the weight, the balance, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So that's where a lot of um, sports players don't like, like for football, you know, to determine where the ball goes. Mm -hmm. You know, someone's, did they make the first down? Did they get a touchdown? Did the nose of the ball cross the imaginary plane of the goal line? Well, Mm -hmm. you could, if you had a sensor in the ball, determine that 100%. But then you're dealing with something that's thrown and yep. kicked, the and on, then you're dealing with balance and what's it on there and everything else. It's mm. the ongoing debate, right? Uh, mm-hmm. We often often see cited when this conversation comes up that uh, well, you know, there's an AI score line judge in in tennis, for instance, mm-hmm. that, that has been. I, I think it's regulation now, right? Um, so so it'll be interesting to see how at the end of the game the game continues to change with technology, you know. Um, so that's nothing new. So now that is our awesome. thing of the week. Oh, that's out of whack this week. Thank you everybody that is supporting the show over at patreon.com slash awesome cast, including our friend Cynthia Klosky, Michael Fedor, John DeGore, and Dave Potter. That definitely needs a voice thing. We should see if Kit will do the do the uh the voice thing for all of our patrons. Maybe. I'm actually going to ask. That's my that's my New Year's resolution to actually ask for things instead of saying I need to talk to somebody and then not do it. Anyways, uh, you guys support the show. We got a live Patreon and we go on live about 10, 20 minutes early and sometimes it's BSing, sometimes it's just me kind of contemplating things. Sometimes it's just me listening to Snoopy lo-fi Christmas music. Uh, so <laughs> and, uh, and catching up with uh, whoever is in the studio. So Intern John is on the ones and twos in the uh, chat rooms. If you're joining us live or catch us afterwards or you're catching us via the social medias, did a great job the first week. Good to have you back i think you're off the next couple of weeks for the holidays correct oh that's next week's the party so perfect perfect so uh excited for that too so we're gonna try we're gonna try to get some more people in here for awesome cast we're gonna do our predictions we're gonna do that whole thing i think next week um if memory serves that's how we we have the predictions from last year on the sheet somewhere uh oh i think i definitely put them in something you know i think i put them i think i had i i think that's when i started using chat gpt so i made it spell out everything in the description so i don't have to go searching for and re-listen to the show again um, so I remember I was like, I, I remember taking a little bit extra, um, concern with that, but we have an intern to help us with that now. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> anyways, um, let's get into some more of these stories here, Dave. Uh, so go, oh geez, uh, I'm going to, cause I, I know I have a lot in here. What is of interest to you, Dave? Let me perusing. Perusing. I'm, peru- I'm perusing. Yes. Perusing. Um, we need the perusing music going. 
Because we're getting into it. Yep, yep, it's the news. <laughs> Still perusing. <laughs> I thought I'd make a quicker choice. No, nope, no, no, sorry. It's it's it that's me. <laughs> um I mean, like the thing is that they're good. Like I, said, I just want to make sure I can talk he, about he something really I'm is, is familiar with. Really burning time here for the for the right one. Time. Well, time. well I'll tell you what. Can we talk time. about OpenAI okay. then? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk ahead. about OpenAI. Uh, so um, I, I I caught a little bit of discussion on this. So officially, I hope this isn't a paid thing. Okay, we're good. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Verge is my favorite one. Now I may actually pay for the Verge. I actually like them that much that I may drop seven bucks a month. Mm. I'm killing. I killed Peacock that this week. I'm. I got like two more subscriptions. Oh. I'm killing this this month. So listen, wrestling's going through no. a streaming readjustment. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I land on this thing. Okay, so this whole WWE going to Netflix and AEW coming to Max thing is really kind of changing my game up. So I'm assessing things. Um, anyways, uh, but the big news, the big news, and we've been waiting for this. Um, not that I think we're going to drop the coin on it just yet. I'd love to do an experimentation run on this, though. But OpenAI open has finally released Sora to the public. Now, this is the the, um, you know, much like we played with uh, a while ago with the early uh, uh, image generation, uh, you know, and I guess everybody's doing it now. Right. With ChatGPT and everything like that. Or if you're over on the Bing image creator or anything like that. Right. So OpenAI's mm -hmm. video, according to the Verge, OpenAI as a video generation AI tool is available. And if you and it's for two hundred dollars per month uh, with the G chat GPT pro plan, I just have the regular one. You can prompt it for uh, 1080p videos up to 20 seconds long. So there you go. So that so we can do that. We can create a 20 second video. We could. <laughs> what if we could create an animated intro? Oh my god! I need to pay for 200 bucks for this for a month and just create a crazy animated tech imagery intro for this show. That might actually be something I need to do. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, yeah. So so that it's open. So now everybody is proclaiming Hollywood is dead. I am sorry to our film intern. Actually, no, this is perfect for you because you know the concepts and you know the prompts to put in here for something like this because you're film, uh, uh, what you might call it. So I don't have a live mic on you. You're not recording. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't set it up. Um, but still, like that's, that's a pretty, I think... Um, this is an exploratory phase now. Don't go Coca-Cola and make an entire uh, commercial out of it. <clears throat> uh, but um, but which was an interesting. That was a very interesting choice. <laughs> but to do it this early in the game when there's so much discussion around it. But I guess that's what they do. Um, but I'm and also I'm really curious if that you know how much money did that actually save them versus a, a typical computer generated uh, uh, you know um, you know polar bear. You know, you still got to sit there and iterate and edit this thing and, and do all that kind of stuff around whatever it sends you out. Right. Um, so and edit around the weirdness and, and all that. So, you know, it still takes time and it still takes editing. So I'm really kind of curious what that what that what that looked like. You know, I'd love to see the cost benefit on that, which I'm sure they'll never release uh, but <laughs> unless it was actually part of a case study. Um, but yeah, so that's that's part of it there. I didn't see if there's a limit as far as okay you can uh it comes with unlimited generations and up to 500 priority videos while bumping the resolution to 1080 uh and the duration to 20 seconds um you can with the chat chat gpt gpt plus subscription you can generate up to 50 priority videos a thousand credits at a resolution of 720 is that what i'm at and that's five seconds and that's five so seconds, that's but that's five still so, something to play with here. Right, right. And then you get the $200 Pro, and that's mm -hmm. where you get the uh, 500 priority videos. Mm -hmm. now, and that. So, now, if, you, I, so I am, if you only want to try like little five-second videos, uh -huh. and I would say even if you're interested and in this, I don't know what the output of this is, but if you're looking for longer content, you could do multiple five second videos and put them together and get longer like like for an opening you could have like a five second snippet five second five second and then download them and put them in something else and put them well, together apparently i had not seen the part where um that chat gp plus because everybody i was listening to was talking about the 200 hundred dollar version right because of 1080 because that's that's the minimum you'd probably want to do mm -hmm. um 
where, how do I access this? Because apparently I have this. So <laughs> um, I'm going to explore that a little bit here on the side because I just I just came across that bit. Um, you, you have to go to Sora.com, it looks like. Sora.com, okay. And, and we're in there, and I gotta log my log my log in. Account yeah. creation is oh. unavailable. That's yeah. good to uh, see. And I, well, the thing is, and further down in the article, mm -hmm. um, actually not further down, but it, in one of the things beneath the article, the little additional bits they have, mm -hmm. uh, they close the application shortly after launch. So apparently, I so many people this. signed yes. up. So uh, many people signed up. They Sasquatch and Gray. Yeah. <laughs> so here's some of the samples on their front page here. The puppies look interesting. Um, you know, so these are all generated in AI. There's a nice kind of roll around of a, there's two. Wait, I love the sumo pandas though. Panda and bear uh, situation <laughs> there. Um, I mean, they look pretty incredible actually. So, I mean, there's definitely a little bit of uncanniness to them. Um, Office cat, for instance, is kind of interesting. Um, yeah. On the left, if you're with us on the video, this lizard on a bed. Um, so I, I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like the, the biggest opportunity is just to make the most surreal thing possible. Uh, so snow monkey, the snow monkey enjoying a, uh, a warm bath there on the left. There's the snow monkey. Right oh, there. There's the snow oh, monkey, right, right. warm bath, snow monkey. Look at him. Look at him. He's just enjoying it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so yeah, I can log in and just, it, it, apparently you, you log in with your account, but it's still, um, you know, you still technically create a new one with the Sora kind of situation. Yeah. So. Um, but, um, it's, uh, that'll open up, I'm sure here in a little bit, I'm probably just over overwhelmed, uh, oh, on yeah. this, which makes sense. So you have a bunch of people, not necessarily with the pro, but with the premium. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just and, saying, I'll give it a try. And then the shock headline is the $200 price tag, right? Yeah, uh, per always. month, but you obviously do have access to play with a $20 a month price. Uh, thing mm -hmm. that I think most people I would know that are into this have, right? I am, oh my God, I just really, <laughs> I know some businesses that have been playing with chat GPT and have been some, having some really peculiar results. Uh, I'm really curious mm. what happens when they get into this. Um, so, <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm, we're going to poke at this. I, I'm going to, if, if I get in on this thing, I'll put some, some, um, I'll put some options out there. I'll put some uh, experiments out there. And uh, you know what? I want to put, I want to filter it through my wife because she's so much better about these detailed uh, uh, outputs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and I'll throw her at, at, at a couple of these things and uh, see if we can get anything kind of functional, you know? Mm -hmm. So maybe we can make a nice little weird animated intro for the wrestling uh, 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 logo or something like that. So um, I, I would say that we're going to, just like when, uh, Photoshop came down in price mm -hmm. and became a little bit easier. Other things similar were, and you saw a whole bunch of low quality mm -hmm. photo manipulations when they first came out mm -hmm. because anyone could do it. You're going to see very similar. You're going to see some really weird stuff coming out. <laughs> yep. But yeah. That's the fun thing of, of early things coming out. I mean, you know, just remember the images were so disturbing when they started with the with the extra fingers and everything and extra limbs sometimes, yeah. right? So I mean, that's part of it. That's part of as part of experimentation. I mean, it's it, it's just like cloning. It's just, sometimes you get an extra limb, uh, so but it happens faster, and nobody entirely gets hurt. So, um, uh, sorry, a question. A technical question came up that was semi urgent, and I need to get out that uh, in a moment. But in the in the meantime, um, let's talk about. Uh, you know what? I did find something I'm interested in. Yeah, here. what do you want to talk about? Yeah, here, the Dave? the YouTube AI powered dubbing mm -hmm. is available to many more creators I now. Just, not not that, everyone, but that's that is I, interesting to me. And that's one I just saw pop up too. So I'm yep. just kind of learning the application of it. So it looks now. It just says. Uh, you have to be in the YouTube partner program. So for, for us normals, uh, we probably don't have access to it. But saying it, it, it's a good I Honestly, I'm really interested. Also, if they expand this out um, to people not in the partner program. Mm -hmm. Because I make videos for my work that are tutorials. Mm -hmm. 
And we post it to YouTube and we call them mobilist minutes. They're only two to three minute long little help features. And we do have customers in South America who do not speak English. And it would be great to translate this into Spanish. Because right now, the way we would have to do it, uh, in the program I use, um, Guide, it does have a translate button that I tested, and it doesn't work good. Mm -hmm. it, it does a, a more literal translation, where if you're trying to explain something, you just can't substitute word for word. You know, you need someone who knows the language and can put things in context. So something like this would be a great help because right now the only other option is that we do have a, I do have a co-worker who's fluent in Spanish, so she would have to re-record all the videos and do voiceovers for all the videos, mm -hmm. which is a pain. <laughs> so to have something where you could say, okay, you know, do a voiceover instead of English, make it in Spanish or make it in German or make it in Italian, or, you know, make it where it's an overdub. Um, now, it does say that if you're starting in a non-English language, you can only go to English. So if you created something in German, you can't, you can't make it into Hindi. Uh, so I think that, I don't know if that's a limitation of their learning model they're using, where they can go English out and everything to English, but you can't kind of go language to language and I'm, cur um, I'm curious so i do i am uh technically part of the um partner program with the indie wrestling.us account i'm uh and it has a copyright on it so that might be why that one's not popping up um and i'm also looking at wrestling matches so i don't like, i mean there's obviously commentary over it so i don't know what that does for it i would love if we had some natural dubs over these uh, my question is is this something that you kind of pick as in like you kind of like you pick the spanish kind of channel mm -hmm. on 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 your tv sometimes for the sap or is it something that kind of naturally happens so i'm looking at this and i'm not seeing anything yet at least in my version um no this video is not made for kids definitely not uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm not seeing anything in the editor or anything for that just yet either. So I think if you because there, there's they show one where it's um, an, a sample of an overdub of a French video into English. OK. And it looks like if you hit the gear, you go to audio track, you have the option between French, original and English. Mm -hmm. If I hang the gear down down below and then uh, audio track. You're the okay, top. That makes sense. So I can go to the French version and then it's in French. Right. So. And the English, it sounds, it sounds like a AI generated voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, so they, they said it does it's, not it's, sound like a, it doesn't sound too you. It's not yet. It's not yet natural, but it's functional, right? It doesn't do anything for the text on screen. Happy world before plunging our potatoes into it. <laughs> cook for 15 minutes but still like it, it's 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 oh yeah it's not, still i think it's the same nothing, music yeah. right it, it's still better than nothing it gets it across it's the same music uh and i know i'm very i'm very uh one thing i've liked that youtube has done is it doesn't always do this i think it depends on the nature of the video um but whenever we, and we get tagged for audio all the time there's always you know entrances and all, people coming out and stuff and i do love that there's an option typically to to erase the music from it it will detect the music and separate that out of the audio and erase it right um i don't often go back to see how it comes out <laughs> to be honest and it's probably not great um with the crowd noises and everything interfused in there maybe you just get the text and it takes everything or, or the uh the, the commentators and everything else is taken out which great because i think that's better than like uh, an entire minute of just quietness. I've seen Ring of Honor put that on one of their videos from an old match because mm -hmm. they, they've just muted stuff on their on their catalog. And I was just like, this is weird after I just sat here through your fully produced thing, right? Um, so this is, I honestly, I would, if I had the ability, I would turn this on for everything because I know that pro wrestling is universal. I can tell by some of the likes in the comments that we get, right? Um, I would love to um, continue to serve that. Um, you know, with that, because obviously they're watching and, and, and I know, you know, English is 
a second language a lot of places but still i i you know whatever kind of whatever makes that easier you know for an audience yeah. to kind of come through right so and oh, oh somebody uh, somebody's blocking the train outside i don't know if you hear that uh, oh <laughs> uh oh they just sit here and uh uh and, and uh honk at them oh yeah there they are hello <laughs> hello red line um we, if, I'll, I'll give you the other shot if we see them uh pull up uh anyways mm-hmm. Interesting number. Now, I was I was also just trying to pick a random YouTube video, and mm. it, it my problem is it's hard to tell who's in the creator, yeah, program or not. And oh, uh, they're actually actually um, so they don't offer the partner program. It says a partner program, right? Partner program. Uh, yeah. They don't offer the partner program until you've reached at least a uh, thousand um, followers, right. subscribers, and then it also you have also have to meet a certain threshold of. Um, uh, uh, watch uploaded. hours, views, like yep. some combination of that, right? Um, so, so it, it's like a thousand plus, like you know, I don't know, a hundred thousand hours in 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 a in a month or something like that, right? Um, which can be hard depending on what kind of content you're doing. <laughs> so, and that's in that's also a sidebar of like, and now we're creating content that just works better on the platform instead of what we want to make. You know, is always kind of a yeah. I mean, we. I, honestly, we do terrible. We do absolutely terrible on YouTube because uh, we're so long form and we're a podcast that's just mm-hmm. kind of put on there. Uh, the shorts do well um, in here and there, uh, you know, here and there, you know, not enough to build up into a partner program for Awesome Cast. So I really wish I just put everything on one, <laughs> to be quite honest, just to make it easier to bump all that up with, with at least a little bit we get from everybody. Yeah. Um, but anyways, that's that's a whole other thing there. So. Well, I, I mean, for YouTube, I know we're kind of going off the original story, but mm-hmm. I, I know a lot of people who are on TikTok right now mm-hmm. who are looking for alternative yes. uh, since the ban was not shot I, down in, in I, that. I, I do not. I do not envision a world where TikTok will fundamentally go away. No, but people are still do doing not. like, but, but I'm saying, but they're everybody being should, smart. Yes. All, yeah. You should always be shoring up and right. cross pollinating platforms. Absolutely. Right, right. Well, not only that, but you know, like, um, there's one thing I listened to, um, cafe latte. Um, that sounds it, delicious. It, it, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but just to say their videos are normally like three to seven minutes long, mm-hmm. which is perfect for TikTok. Mm-hmm. However, it's too long for Instagram. Is this the perfect coffee one? Uh, no. How to make no. the perfect latte? No, no. I want to know. Uh, more. It's cafe, as in C A F A E. Oh. As the mystical characters, the Fae. cafe oh. latte. Oh, oh, okay. Um. So, uh, but I'm you know, even more she, interested she, now. She literally, it, the creator came on and said. I'm trying to figure out what to do because mm-hmm. they're really too short for YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, Are so they? what she's doing. So what she's doing, she put compilations in. Mm-hmm. So every like two weeks worth of episodes, she'll put a, a, a giant compilation and she'll publish that. That's what creators but, need to do though. Like, 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 right. you know, you know, I, I look at, you know, there's the podcast and people listen to it on that platform, but I also look at it as I look at the like shows like this as a content generation machine for these small be small mm-hmm. uh you know clip culture you know whatever you call it tiktok culture reels culture uh yeah. kind of thing uh, we still don't play the game the way we should but we definitely do get more people looking at the clips of the show sometimes more than the show um because but also you know it's like well if we get an audience because they like what you know what i'm never listening to pat mcafee but if there's a funny clip on tiktok i'm gonna like it right yeah so but now you've diversified uh, your your content yeah. generation game a little bit here, and and you never know, maybe and then maybe at a certain point we make things exclusively for TikTok or you know or TikTok style things. Right. Um, you know, it, it's it's you know what? Hey, that's what the whole point is for us to play here. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, it's really the push from a lot of creators saying, "I like TikTok." Mm-hmm. I'm hoping it doesn't go away, but I have to prepare because this is an income stream for me. Absolutely. So I have to prepare. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And like I said, a lot of these are a lot of the little skits and stuff are, you know, three to five minutes. Well, you can't go to Instagram because they 
walk you down. Same mm-hmm. thing with like Facebook. The mm-hmm. same the same thing with the shorts there. They're mm-hmm. you know it's like oh it's ninety seconds too long, um, um, and then you go to YouTube. You got YouTube Shorts yep. where it doesn't have the traction. So they're yep. they're again it's experimentation Absolutely. of this is happening out of our control. But what can I do about it? Mm-hmm. And I need to prepare now mm-hmm. instead of waiting. Yeah. For January was it nineteenth? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just a reminder. Make sure you have a home that's not dependent on these. Because even even you know, how many people have had random? Uh, I was listening to a thing on Office Hours Global today where somebody was um, they were doing an online radio situation and and they said because of the comments in in their YouTube they kept getting strikes uh, on there. Um, so I. I which I haven't heard of comments leading to it, but like content, you know, you know, um, if we talk about the presidential election, let's see if it happens now. Uh, there's usually a thing that pops up at the top of the video says da, 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 like it's a fact check thing. Um, um, you know, but Twitter does that and, and, and other places do that now and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Right. Um, so, but it's interesting because they are, you know, this video is already transcribed just as it's going out the door and they're making mm-hmm. decisions on that. Like I, I, one thing I make the mistake on, God, we're just going deep baseball on the inside baseball mm-hmm. on this, but I don't, I don't, um, cause I notice a lot of the big creators, they go in and edit the text and everything. Um, when, it, when they use the F word for instance. Right. And there's like mm-hmm. something like it, it was a rule for YouTube or TikTok. Don't see the, don't say, don't swear in the first, like, like, like 15 seconds of, of a video or something like that. But the clips are putting out, I'm, I'm kind of doing an auto generate thing and, you know, just to, for expediency. Mm. And I'm just like, I bet, I wonder if I look at the ones that have no views, if they're the ones that we swear at the beginning, you know, I, you know, do a little AB test. Anyways, um, let's hear more there. Either way, diversify your stuff. Um, if you're a content creator and really serious mm. about it and you do have some traction on the platform, um, I know it's hard to like if you if you have traction on one platform, you need a second or at least a dot com um, or something, something people can find you when something potentially takes you down. Uh, somebody else I was just dealing with. They had their stuff um, taken down. And I was like, well, you could be something that you tripped. Oh, no. Somebody was doing a photography one and they, they said they got taken down for community standards. And I was like, well, I bet you either somebody flagged you because they just don't like the people that you're working with or um, and that was, they did it enough that took you down or mm-hmm. they think you're porn because you're photographing pro wrestlers with their shirts off. In interesting positions mm-hmm. in black and white. Yeah. And you're breaking the bot. <laughs> so, uh, go for your appeal and see where it goes. And I think I saw, I think it might be up again. So, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, his, uh, his Instagram. So I'm about to ask him about that. If we see him Thursday anyways. Um, and it was just, it, it was just, he's taken black and white pictures around wrestling shows of the wrestlers in action out of the ring, you know, all kinds of stuff. And that, that seemed to be all that was happening there. So and I, I told him, I was like, dude, you, that it, they probably think you're poor. And he's like, yep, that's probably it. Uh, let's bring it around to games. I need to find time to play the Indiana Jones game because that game looks swell. First of all, as a side note there, I did not get an opportunity. Actually, I went to try to play it on Sunday night and needed to download 80 gigs. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to play Call of Duty then. Uh, by the way, there's a Christmas edition of Nuketown level over there, which was fantastic. <laughs> so, um, also really weird to see President Bill Clinton in a video game represented. Because it takes uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Six takes place during Desert Storm, um, but I do appreciate you get in the uh, spy van and they're playing head like a hole by Nine Inch Nails. So I'm like, why are they playing this? And I looked at the date. I was like, oh, that's when we are. Oh, this is a fundraising event for President Clinton that I'm, that I'm breaking into. <laughs> like this game is wild. Um, and pulling at the member berries there. Anyways, uh, speaking of video games, uh, Valve, uh, you know, maybe you're wondering, you heard of the Steam Deck, you heard, remember there was Steam OS and all that other stuff. Valve does have a master plan for Steam machines, and they say it's uh, finally coming together according to The Verge, again, my favorite news source that I'm probably going to pay for soon. Um, <laughs> so, no, they, they are, um, oh no, hey, if you want to see what that paywall looks like, this is it. I, I think they give you so many articles or something because this started this started mm. popping up. Um, continue with, you, you know what, this is the follow-up. This is the follow-up to The Verge. Uh, let's go. What are they asking for? Only $7 a month. 
Uh, so, but again, if you really like that content, I think it's worthwhile. So it's one of those that yeah. I would consider paying for. So fifty dollars a year, or or fifty dollars a year plus a limited edition magazine. <laughs> what physical? F- physical? Like physical? I, I don't know, but it said limited edition magazine worth twenty dollars. I mean, that makes. I mean, that makes up for it. You know, <laughs> a little bit, right? I put something on the shelf. That's cool. You know, somebody is doing a compendium of every issue of Electronic Gaming Monthly. I appreciate the idea, but a massive compendium of like 20, 30 years of video game uh, magazines seems pretty crazy. Uh, that'd be fun to flip through, except it would be bulky. Um, so anyways, all the all these sidebars. Um, I think there was like a Kickstarter for it or something. He's popping up in my feed, so. Where was I? I? I just meandered all, all over the place on this thing. Um, so the idea is um, they're going, you know, obviously Steam has been, Valve and Steam have been, you know, they basically have their own platform with Steam. You know, mm-hmm. I, if, I feel like it's the de facto thing that you buy your games on for most people. Um, I know Epic Games and GOG.com that we talked about last week with the Warcraft um, um old school versions, um, for instance, we're, we're, you know, looking at, you know, they're nipping at the heels a little bit, or at least um, every time I touch this, it goes to the subscription. Um, but the idea is uh, they are looking to put out a, uh, a Steam controller too. Um, they are doing a, uh, they're looking to do a living room console in the near future. Um, they also see in code seemingly, they were in a rumor territory. I apologize. I try not to do that. Um, but they're looking for um, third party uh, Steam OS hardware. Uh, partners to create some things around that and steam os was the linux um is a linux based Mm -hmm. um operating system that they were running the steam deck on or running on the steam deck excuse me so and you can play around with a little bit to play some games that are not fully compatible that's why there's a compatibility list because they basically need to convert things to um at least like an emulation layer layer. my brother knows more about this because he has a steam deck and goes really deep into this stuff so and turns out he commented on this post uh as well so um so my brother matt uh uh, lord sorg on the uh twitch streams you can go check that out by the way he finally put together his one-up tower uh, i i shamed my brother into putting together his one-up arcade machine because it's, mm. it's at least two thanksgivings it's been sitting there in the box i'm like matt why don't you set that thing up he's like well we don't have room for him. i'm like well, there's room right there where the box is that thing doesn't get very much bigger than what the box is <laughs> i've seen them uh and then he sent me a picture like two days ago it's a, and it's just like sitting in the living room i'm like yes no i'm doing a christmas <laughs> <laughs> so anyways uh steam he says uh he, he's saying the steam os is so close as well pretty sure one of the things that kept it back was driver support uh specifically nvidia drivers of course on linux have been a problem that makes sense um also he's pretty interested in the steam controller successor as somebody that does it and again he's has one of the first generation steam decks i think he had it on the pre-order right um it's mm. it's very so i've had my hands on it a couple times it's bulky it's it's probably two to three times thicker mm. than than a um, a Nintendo Switch from if my memory serves. Um, but the nice thing is you can do all the Steam stuff, but you can also bring in like the GOG.com stuff. I think some Epic mm-hmm. Game downloads, the Game Pass uh, streaming, Nvidia Go. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry, Nvidia Now streaming. You know things like that. So um, so that's that, that that's that's something to look forward to. So is this a big competitor? I don't know because you know are these things going to be powerful enough? You know we we keep seeing the specs on on this Indiana Jones game. You know has been making the rounds and everybody's like this is the minimum specs if you want you know X and Y and ray tracing is required and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like I'm just going to play it on my Xbox Series S. I'm good guys. Um, so and it's including Game Gas. So I'm really good and it's like an eight hour game. So I'm really good not paying Ooh. seventy bucks on that thing. Um, so if I saw it was like a sixty hour game, I was going to back away. But I think it's going to be a pretty um, you know, I think it's going to be like Guardians or something. It's very puzzle based, puzzle and fist fighting, and it's from the same. Oh. Sorry, I'm going down the rabbit hole because I've been really interested. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't been this interested in, in a new game that wasn't like something I buy all the time, like like Street Fighter or WWE games. Um, it's from the same group that did the old Riddick games, uh, Escape from Bitcher Bay, which was a, one of the originally lauded. I think it was on the original Xbox. I think remember that might be the mm-hmm. second one. Um, either way, um, so so really, really good kind of um, converting a a a 
you know, movie into a side story video game like this. Right. Um, and, and, and so some people that, that are really good at that. And also I'm very interested in Tom Baker is the, is the voice actor for, uh, that's, you know, that's mimicking Harrison Ford a little bit. I thought it was damn Harrison Ford. Sorry. Until I started Mm -hmm. seeing the interviews pop up on TikTok. It's, it's it's been wild to just listen to him talk about the process of like, well, I'm Harrison Ford, but I need to stop trying to be Harrison Ford. And I just need to be in the thing. And I'm just like, it's got me so into like, I got to play this game. I am love Indiana Jones. Really enjoyed the the last movie, at least. So, and Last Crusade is, I, I and I love when people are reviewing this, they, they kind of like get their, get, you know, their thoughts on old movies. And they said that Last Crusade is the perfect Indiana Jones movie. And yes, absolutely. I watched that over and over again. Um, anyways, go play Indiana Jones. I've got game pass, I guess is the thing there. <laughs> Where was I going with that? Um, so I know well, just that go it ahead. was just what you were into and whether you could play it on the stream steam mm-hmm. deck, or if you're probably just going to play it on your Xbox. I think that's where. Yeah. 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 Like, like if you're, yeah. If you, if you had a, a, a steam OS or whatever, right. Yeah. Um, I also want to give a shout out to, uh, I believe it's a Luna is Amazon's streaming platform. If you have Amazon Prime, go to Prime Gaming. First of all, you could be getting free games. Um, they have the weekly, like, two to six free games. That's either through their uh, download. They're all PC games. GOG.com, Epic Games, like, a lot of that pops in there. But if you then go to Luna, after you've done that for a few weeks, they're starting to bring in, first of all, if they're a free game through Amazon Prime, and and you'd have to download, like, Amazon Prime Twitch downloader and and download the games out of that in order to play them, right? And and I, again, I don't have a computer kind of available to just throw a bunch of games at like that, right? That's powerful enough to play a lot of the new ones. I have an old one that I'm playing like Walking Dead Telltale games on it, right? Uh, streaming through my Apple TV. Um, and it's just off in an office in my house. Um, but anyways, so so I would so. Uh, we were having problems at the pay-per-view parties. We use a Chromecast. And I had like the newest Chromecast before they went to the Google TV. And uh, Dave, I think you've been here. When they, like we would just keep getting, it just get, keep getting hung up, right? And I was like, mm-hmm. I need something new. I don't know what this is. I bought a $20 HD Fire TV stick. $20. <laughs> so I can't remember if it was on sale. And I hooked this thing up. Haven't had a problem between Triller and Peacock for WWE, AEW uh, pay-per-views. Uh, whenever we have people over to the studio for them. Um, but then I like, I synced my Xbox controller to it and pulled up the Luna. I was playing Watch Dogs the other day. I'm like, dude, that is smooth. <laughs> like, you you wouldn't know. A $20 TV stick is playing a full, uh, it looks like it's full 1080 uh, uh, game streaming. Uh, pretty smooth. Mm-hmm. Through. So um, I remember I, I had a beta of it and I was starting to play control um, back when Luna started on a laptop. I sat there for an entire afternoon and played, played as far as I could in control before like the trial went up. Um, it like Luna's pretty that, that's there. X, Game Pass is iffy here, hit and miss here and there um, in comparison. I also think GeForce is pretty good, too. Um, but it's nice that like it drops in there. You're right in it. It's kind of a nice positive. Um, strangely, works on the twenty dollars stick. Won't work on the TV. <laughs> Won't we'll work on the eighty dollars TV that we have in the studio that has Fire TV built into it. So, um, really, really curious um, how that works. So, just throwing that out there. That's my gaming uh, stream of consciousness, I guess, for the show this week. So, um, but anyways, Dave, you have any closing things you want to get out? Uh, well, just uh, coming up this week, and I was hoping it would be early in the week, uh, is iOS 18.2. And this is going to uh, have the big, some of the big releases for AI, finally. Mm. Or I know 18.1 had some. This is going to have, uh, like, in the notes app, you can write a description and it'll make an image. So more than the hilarious uh, summarization of multiple uh, uh, conversations. Uh, exactly. That I've been yeah. <laughs> yeah. And actually, ChatGPT um, tie in now. Mm-hmm. And more ab- ability to say, you know, look at this text and you can tell you can tell it how you want to rewrite it. Mm-hmm. Or if you have an iPad with a pencil, you can actually do a hand drawing and it'll convert that into a picture. So that's more coming out later this week. I, 
the weird thing is that the release candidate was last week and release candidate two mm-hmm. came out today, okay. which is kind of unusual to have two release candidates, but. Unless they um, found something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some yeah. friends of ours are doing their jobs and testing. Which is, and again, I'm not complaining because I'd rather them catch it now oh, yeah. versus, no. oh, we just released this to 300 million or, you know, a, a billion people and oops. That's the, <laughs> that's the, I found the, I found the problem before we flew the plane and I don't mind sitting on the tarmac. Uh, exactly. Yes, exactly. Because if you tell me that that's a problem, that would have been a problem if we were up in the air. That's where I'm at with that. So uh, a reminder, I'm going to do an unboxing of a Loop TV. What is it? We'll refresh your memory on that. That's going to be on Patreon. Uh, that will be under the payroll. So ignore that in a moment in the corner <laughs> on the video. Uh, Dave Bonner, the iPhoneography podcast. Yep. I'm pretty much prod, prod everywhere on the uh, socials. Yes. Yes. Except for that one place. I can't remember which one. Probably. Uh, the Anyways. TikTok. Yes, the ticket. The, the one that may not be around in a month. The ticket. So, okay. See, it doesn't even matter. Don't, 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 it doesn't matter. Just get your. I, and okay, to be clear, also, when this happens, uh, allegedly it'll just be taken out of the app stores and you can still work it. But again, you're going to start losing people here and there. So, anyways, at Sorgatron on all the social medias, I will be around. We're doing our Thursday night show as usual on New Ken the Training Night uh, with our friends at 880 Wrestling T2T Pittsburgh Academy. And also, Saturday, we'll be uh, doing the production. I'm actually going to be taking over the director's chair uh, for RWA's uh, big show uh, this weekend in West Newton. Those will be streaming on IndieWrestling.us uh, in all of our streaming places. And, well, Missy's going to California for new japan Ooh. that's nice she gets to go to a warm place in long beach uh <laughs> to do that in this weird pyramid that i almost lost my mind in a couple years ago um so <laughs> uh anyways i hope the headsets work because i did not that day and i think we i think we're in like a I mean, just a weird signal area or something right anyways and uh, I think that's all the big stuff happening here. So stay tuned. Next week, it'll be our year-end predictions and see how we did Christmassy uh, kind of close out of the year. God, it kind of snuck up on me a little bit. We didn't even write any songs for the wrestlers uh, for next week yet mm. uh, for the other show. So anyways, thank you, Dave Ponder. Thank you, intern John. And we'll be uh, on the Patreon in the moment if you're with us here live. See you guys next time. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like it discussed from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to A Gay and His Envy on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.